Well, Imani, our correspondent, joins us from Cross River. Hello, Imani. What's the situation now? Have they concluded the voting and waiting for results? Yeah, hi, Chamberlain. They've concluded the voting. We are still here as INEC headquarters waiting for coalition, and there's nothing happening. So we've just been here, nothing is happening. But okay. on our way here, we were attacked by policemen on duty at about 5.30 to 6 this evening. We were headed here, and uh, we found policemen on duty. There was a roadblock. And so approaching the roadblock, we decided to stop to seek permission from them and take shots. Approaching them, they ran towards our camera, attacked my camera guy, took away some valuables from us. And we, it was just a call we made to the commissioner of police, who now spoke with his men, and they allowed us to. So we've been here for, I think, about one hour plus now, and not, nothing is happening. Well, well, I yeah. hope you, you, are, you are safe, though, uh, and uh, not being uh, malhandled. That will be of grave concern to us here in Lagos, the HQ of Channels Television. Uh, but tell us, well, tell us still, uh, what are the people's uh, expectations at this point in time? Well, the propaganda that we, as Channels Television, we need to verify before we let the public know. But there's been propaganda that um, people from party members are planning to reach, and that's why the results have not been announced. So we are still here waiting, and irrespective of what time, we'll be here to get the results and get back to you. Well, speaking about uh, the policeman who attacked you and the subsequent call to the police commissioner, what did he say? Did he say they were going to, what, uh, those who did that face the music? Did you get any ID of any one of them? And why did they do that? We, we, the, the only thing the commissioner did was he, handed, he asked us to hand over the phone to the most senior officer there. And as soon as we did that, they retreated. That was, that was the situation right now. But our camera was destroyed. The microphone part of it was destroyed. The camera lens was also destroyed. So as my camera guy, noticing what was happening, he immediately left it on record. So we were able to get the action. His phone was taken, his wristwatch was also taken by one of the uh, officers, by one of the men, sorry. Well, I, I think this needs to be properly uh, put in perspective. I mean, why, what? Let's get, let, let me, I could take you back a little bit. This, this kind of sounds strange. You're going about your lawful duty as permitted by the law, and then you, you took permission from them to continue your job, and then they attacked you for no reason whatsoever. We're, we're also surprised because at, at the point, you have to speak with one of the, the, the previous PPRO here, and the first question he asked one of the men was, are you on official duty? They said yes. And the next question was, so why did you attack these people? Because we had a, a INEC duty identification or not, and the tag we we used had that tag clearly on it. We even had our logo in front of the tag we. And so we don't know why they decided to treat us that way. Did they ask the, the cabman for his document or ask, any identification before that happened? Because sometimes uh, some of those they things could not. precede those kind of... Nothing whatsoever? They did not. Nothing, nothing. Nothing. Well, that's strange. But then we'll have to also uh, keep tabs with the Commissioner of Police to find out what exactly happened. So if they've done something, uh, attacking an innocent citizen, that's wrong. And uh, we also need to emphasize that much because... They shouldn't just be let off the hook. Just no, like no, no. We, we, it's a policy for Channels TV. We strongly object and we protest such attacks on our staff on the field uh, by any means. Uh, we are just carrying out our duties to the society and for the greater good or for humanity. And uh, the police or the military or whoever is on the street should have an understanding that these are people of the... Uh, of the uh, of the press and yeah. you cannot do this is totally unacceptable so 
would like to let uh, the call uh, is the, um, for themselves. Let it yes, out. Yes, of course. I, I believe but, that uh, uh, the Inspector General of Police will be listening to this, and our cameras got broken. Uh, a lot of things have been destroyed. We, our staff were, were molested to an extent, and this is embarrassing. This, what about this should the not be happening. The general public. I hope that channels can also put out a strong statement against the military or the security forces attacking the general public, because. And channels obviously has that uh, platform. Well, there's an average man on the street that can easily be treated the same way, and nobody. Well, it's not the staff of channels. Exactly. And nobody will really care. You, you will not you, get that you, attention. You know, you know? Timberley, let me just say this, if, if you permit me. Now, I'm just filled with indignation and revulsion listening to the report of your correspondent in, in Calabar. I think this um, television station um, has sacrificed a lot for this country. It's a private business, and I'm not uh, pandering uh, here or oh, patronizing you on earth, really. In this country, you lost a correspondent to Boko Haram while he was doing his job. He had families. He had friends here. And so, security agents cannot carry on as if they love Nigeria more than the media in this country, and anybody, uh, everybody else. In any case, just as the duties of the military, the police force, defined by Section 2014 to 2017 of the Constitution, Section 22 of the Constitution says that the mass media shall hold the government responsible and accountable to the people. It's a constitutional responsibility. Now, this is the footage. Uh, it can, it this cannot be right. Damaged. And, and so beyond this uh, protestation on air, the television station has the responsibility to ensure that justice is done. Because, I mean, you, you just wonder why uh, this going about their lawful duties and other members of the public to face this kind mm -hmm. of scenario. But that's a matter at, of look fact. Look at the, his, his eyes. His face tag. is actually bruised. Did you see yeah. that? We would like, I would like the Inspector General of Police to investigate this because we take very strongly attacks upon our staff who are working in the field. You can look at the pictures now. The camera is just going really uh, uncoordinated to show you that the cameraman was actually having a difficult time trying to establish shots and is being harassed by security operatives. That's the picture again. You can look at his left eye. He's trying to bring it closer just so you have a closer look at this. And he has been hurt. That's, this uh, is unacceptable. That's assault and battery. Uh, and as a matter of fact, as a member of the fourth state of the realm, we're calling on the Inspector General of Police to investigate this matter and bring those police officers who are involved in that, that's clearly assault on battery, to book. Because this kind of thing has to be stamped out from our society. It's a rule of law, not the rule of force. And those who are put in place in public space to protect the people cannot turn against the people because nobody is above the law.